about radio. Okay guys, uh, turning my attention back to this beast, uh, I'll have the, uh, the drill buddy in line here with some bracketry. Um, but the things I need to address um, are down here. Uh, okay, this is the, the mast, so the mast will come down there. Um, so this little uh, reservoir here uh, has got every chance of getting full of water. And um, although it's a sealed bearing, there are, there are ways, if there's water there, it will get into the gearbox and that's no good. So I've got to seal it. And what I'm thinking of is some sort of shroud that goes around there and then comes over and around here. So any rain is, is, is driven off down there. But I've got the keyway uh, in there uh, which is actually um, below the level of this well. So I've got to come up with something that's really watertight and um, I'm thinking I might, I don't know, I, I may even come up with some uh, something like um, uh, a jubilee clip and, uh, and a rubber skirt around here and uh, actually uh, all of the, the water, silicon seal and stuff like that, it's okay for a little while, but it always fails, uh, particularly on metal that's going to go rusty in a, a salt atmosphere. It's, um, the, can that overemphasize the, uh, um, the hassle of a salty atmosphere creates? Heaven only knows how they get on, uh, on board ship. It's got to be a constant problem. Anyway, so that's uh, one issue. Um, not the end of the world. The other thing I want to do is um, I want a positional indicator to actually show which way it's uh, uh, pointing. And uh, you know, you could think of all sorts of complicated uh, gears. You know, you say, oh, we've got this here. Put a, uh, another chain on there, or, or um, but I'm going to drive something like a ten-turn pot. I'm only going to be using one turn, so a 10 turn potentiometer. Um, and that, so that's got over travel, and then I can trim out um, uh, any voltage difference, and I can display that uh, position on an analog meter, and that'll certainly be accurate enough for what I want. Um, and uh, in, in any event, I can turn the aerial and listen to the uh, reception. Um, but uh, I thought I'd share something else with you, another way of doing things. Uh, as you know, what I try to do is uh, in these videos is, is show you something that maybe you haven't seen before or something that you take for granted. And um, I just want to share a, a little bit of uh, my experience with you. Um, as a young man, I guess I had a bit of a reputation for being able to fix things and, and wanting to fix things. And uh, I was contacted by Betty Cadbury, that's of Cadbury's chocolate fame. And um, the Cadbury's have a museum of uh, antique toys and automata. And uh, I was asked to repair some toys and automata. And uh, I'm sure you all have seen this sort of thing. This is the uh, uh, little uh, man with the um, uh, tray and the various items on it. And uh, as uh, uh, he performs his tricks, so all of these mechanical devices um, move. And uh, as an engineer, you could be forgiven for thinking that, you know, this is done with uh, cogs and gears and bevel gears and you know very complicated mechanisms to, to make these uh, reasonably complicated actions take place. But in actual fact you'd be surprised at how simple some of them are. They have a prime mover which is a, a mechanical uh, drive mechanism, a clockwork uh, drive mechanism, um, but then the uh, to actually get the arm to move or twist or some really complicated action um, uh, it's 
done with bits of string, bits of bent wire. And um, I'll, I'll give you an example. Oh, this is um, uh, this is a book uh, that uh, uh, Betty Cadbury gave me. Uh, so uh, I'm, I'll see if I can show you a couple of the images of things I repaired. They're not all in there because um, I think the one, this book was uh, um, already published before um, uh, I I fixed some of the toys. Although some of the toys were in here, even though they they weren't working at the time that the book was published. But uh, they were certainly working after I uh, uh, repaired them. Um, but uh, anyway, why am I telling you that? What, what I want to do is show you uh, another way of actually driving that 10 turn potentiometer. So that's the, uh, the book. And, uh, here it says uh, for Andy, with many thanks for the help with the mechanical toys. Betty Cadbury and uh, these are typical uh, mechanical toys, uh, wind up toys, um, quite a few of them from uh, Germany and uh, I would uh, buy the wire to make the, uh, the spring wire to make springs and then I would uh, make, make new springs and uh, uh, temper them and uh, or harden and temper them. Uh, so quite a few of these uh, sort of things uh, they sort of wind up and run along. So very basic, um, uh, but um, uh, and uh, some of uh, this sort of thing, the uh, the automata, they were extremely expensive uh, way back then. I'm talking a, a lot of years ago. Anyway, um, what I wanted to do was just give you an example sorry, of uh, another way of doing things. And, uh, imagine, let me just check that uh, we're in shot. I just want to give you a, a, another example of or way of doing things. Um, imagine that that's the uh, antenna or the uh, the mast, and that if that's the uh, little potentiometer, and we want to drive that from there, um, you might think in terms of having a gear or a chain or something that links these two together, but. Um, because you want to convert a rotary motion into a rotary motion um, in some different place. And when these guys, uh, the people that made this 200 years ago, the way they would have done it, or, or one of the sort of options that they may have taken, is to have uh, might have been a bit of spring wire, but they, they might as say have a, a, a bit of wire, something like that and uh, it would have been twisted round or, or wrapped around this mechanism here. So let's call that the prime mover, the thing that's going to do the work. And it just stops that from moving around. And uh, let's say we want to come down here and drive our potentiometer down there. So we'll just put that on there as a, as a little flag, okay? Uh, and then all they do is, as the uh, mast turns, so that uh, little device down the bottom would turn. And so long as it remains within its elastic limits, um, there's nothing wrong with that. So uh, the typical sort of mechanism that you'd find in automata would be uh, something like this, if it had got to go around, what would happen is uh, it would have a slot in the end. So, uh, because as you notice, as this turns round, so this wire uh, raises and lowers. It's got to because the distance from there to there is longer than it is from there to there. Uh, so, it simply has a mechanism that this bit of wire would raise up and down but it wouldn't be able to come out of the slot and it would simply do that. 
and say that's what they would have done 200 years ago so uh, we would probably want to do it now with uh, um, optical counters or um, uh, I don't know magnetic detectors <laughs> or anything but they would have used a bit of bent wire and so, so long as you use the wire within its uh, elastic limits that is uh, you're, you're not bending it beyond which uh, it can recover and a bit of spring speed would do that quite happily. Anyway, I probably won't go down that route, but I just thought it's, it's interesting, isn't it? You know, there's um, what a simple thing, you know. But um, anyway, uh, when I get round to actually making something, I'll show you. But um, uh, all I want to demonstrate is. Uh, you don't have to go with uh, what you always know, the, you know, um, th this notion of thinking outside the box. Um, I can't help at looking at anything without uh, wanting to know how it's made. And I know when the first time I opened up one of these jokers, I was staggered to see that um, such, you know, things like this worked with little bits of bent wire and I say that's 200 years ago um, and the thing is they're still working and if they if they're not you can make them work um, anyway I <laughs> just wanted to share that with you um, hope you found it interesting guys uh, thanks for watching bye bye